Hey, you ever been to Chancellor Park? That's where I live. My name is Tavin Dillard, and I live in a trailer park called Chancellor Park, and I mow lawns. I'd like to introduce you to my town. I've been making YouTube's videos since about 2006, and then I've transitioned over to other platforms like the TikToks and the whatnot. But here on this podcast, I'd like to clue you into what's going on with me here lately. And this is like a pre-introduction. Now I'm going to send it off to myself for the real introduction. I'm glad you joined me. Bink, bink. Well, welcome to the Tavern Dillard Podcast, y'all guys. Season 1, Episode 5. The way that works is there's been one, two, three, four episodes before this one. And if you just joined me, first of all, I want to say welcome. Glad you're here. Sure glad you found my podcast. It's like a radio show. You listen to it with your ears. You ain't got nothing to look at except whatever you're looking at kind of thing, wherever you at, and folks are in different spots, you know, so you everybody looking at something different, but you listening to the same thing if you all listening to this podcast. Anyhow, uh, I'd say go back to the first episode. We'll be here waiting for you if you ain't checked out the first four and do it that way. But I, like I said, my name is Tabin Dillard. I'm old Lance. I live in Chancellor Park. It's a trailer park I live in. I'm here. My Meemaw's uh, two trailers down. My brother Brett does not live even in town. I couldn't actually tell you where he lives. He just shows up every now and then. Sometimes he's in jail. Sometimes he gets out. But he, he he's here and there. Uh, JT Whitlow, he's in the trailer park across the way. He's wanting to build a zip line between my trailer and his. I think we got to do some more figuring before that ever happens. But uh, I'm glad you're here. If you've been following the, the podcast, you know, I've been steady walking through this softball season, and now we four games in, and it's it's been pretty rocky already. I ain't, I ain't going to candy coat it. I ain't going to candy cane it. I ain't going to candy corn it. It just ain't been good if uh, if you talking good means you winning softball games because that ain't something we even done yet. We ain't even done that yet. Two weeks, first two weeks of the season, uh, we, we didn't have no uniforms. Right now we two weeks later – so we've been two weeks with new uniforms. We was skins like out of way. So last week we had our first game with them uniforms. I'll tell you this. It felt like we was moving the right direction. Once you look around and you see a bunch of guys that had the same shirt on as you, it feels like y'all belong, you know, like you a team. I mean, truth be told, when we was playing chest naked and I looked around, we didn't look like, oh, they wearing the same uniform kind of thing, you know. We was all wearing special made uniforms, if you know what I mean, courtesy of McDonald's burgers and fries, burger shed milkshakes, tots with cheese from the Sonic. I mean, that kind of thing. Bodies built by fast food. Skins. That was us. So at least, at the very least, we passed all that. Brody Childress was not late this week, and he usually is. Reason is, he needed a haircut and ran far and hard on our team. He owns a bait and tackle shop on the outside of town. I guess it's technically, I think it's still in town limits, but it's out there on the lake, like the bait, bait and tackle shop. It's right by the water there, and he gives haircuts out on the patio out there. And so Brody went out there for a little haircut today, and Rance just brought him with him to the game all cleaned up. I mean, Brody had Rance leave some length in the back, you know, on his hair, but that was on purpose. But he's cleaned up, and, and they showed up to the game, and they's on time, so that was a win, you know, in my book. Of course, we're still looking for, like, a real win, and that was what we was hoping to do this week. I'm going to get into that. But we was playing the city workers tonight. You know, P.J. McGee, he mowed them city fields. So he's a lawnmower man. I'm a lawnmower man. I work for the people. He worked for the city. But he got some of them fellas that works with him together to be a team. So... Hey, Bud's Burger Shed, we may not be a team of all-stars, or let me say it this way, we may not be a team of all-stars yet. But I felt like we was as ready as we ever been today. Rusty Tidwell was saying the same thing. And Rusty, he don't say a lot, so when he speak, people are like, our ears perk up. And when he said, hey, I think we as ready as we ever been, you know, and I was like, I think you're right, Rusty. Like, I was kind of excited for the game to get started. And we felt like a team. You know, we kept it close today in this softball game. Myron Curtis, his head is still in the clouds. He started dating Mary Beth Tucker, and she works at the veterinary in town, but she also, during softball season, helps out in the concession stand, so she's working there on game nights. And he gets a hit in the second inning. That fella's around in first base and decides to blow a kiss to Mary Beth Tucker. Now, there's a couple things. If you round in first, that means you headed to second. You don't stop and blow a kiss, tie your shoe, nothing, till you standing on that bag on second base. But Myron turned to Mary Beth Tucker, and I guess uh, I guess that she was standing outside of the concession stand because that's the only way she could have seen him. I couldn't believe it, but just when I think Myron's like getting his act together, he turned towards second base, and he eats it hard. 
I mean, he falls so hard, y'all guys. Steady putting that shirt to the test with this week too. You know, it's a our new uniforms, and boy, he is he was really getting down and dirty last week at the field, just messing it up, falling, tripping, trying to play softball. But buddy, he's he was like that that shirt was holding on, holding together for dear life. And he got thrown out from deep left field tonight because he's laying in the base path like a toddler making a snow angel, except he ain't moving. He's kind of stunned. I'm thinking, Myron, don't be blowing kisses round in first base. Don't be doing that. You know, there's things you say to the team, y'all say to each other before the game start, like, all right, guys, look alive, uh, stay focused, you know, kind of thing, uh, 100%, let's execute kind of thing. But you never think to say, hey, and by the way, if you haul and tail around first base, don't be looking out around googly-eyed at a gal you may like blowing her a kiss while you're still in the middle of a play. It wasn't like the play was dead and he was standing on first base or he made it to second base. He was running. He did a little turn, kind of look over his shoulder, blow a little kiss, bringing his, his little fingers to his lips to blow a kiss to Mary Beth Tucker. And then he laying on the ground. Insult to injury? Myron disappearing between innings. Where'd he go? Well, we don't want to send one of our teammates to go find him because we got a game to play. So I asked my brother Brett to go get him. Like I said, I, I never know when I'm going to see my brother Brett. He just comes and goes. He don't live in town no more. I really ain't sure where he lives, but I seen him trying to sell a broken moat control dump truck to a nine-year-old, and I just hollered over to him, asking him if he could find Myron Curtis and tell him to get back over the fields. You know, he's going to bat soon. Well, I don't know how your brother is, but my brother needs to know what's in it for him. So that's exactly what he asked me. What's in it for me, Tavin? Like out of way. And I was like, I don't know, Brett. You can use a good card table to wrestle. Now, as soon as them words came out of my mouth, I was thinking, I don't know what I did, but it's the heat of the moment. And his eyes get all wide because he loves to wrestle in the trailer park every time he comes around. And I don't let him use this one good card table because we have to top rope. He wants to use it you know, to top rope them opponents. You need something to jump off. And we ain't got ropes in the trailer park like a real wrestling rink. So like card tables are one of the best things that you can have laying around to like prop up, jump off of or whatever. Well, it don't take long when you have a grown man jumping off a card table to land on somebody. It turns into a pretty bad card table pretty quick. Like they don't last. I mean, at one use. And, uh, and you done. You got yourself a broken card table. Well, he snatches a $10 bill from that kiddo and shoves that broken dump truck into the boy's hands and hauls tail to find Myron. No rhyme or reason that I could tell. No strategy. He's just running and hollering. Myron! Myron Curtis! Where'd you go? Don't you know you got a softball game to play? You know, like that way. He's just kind of hollering it out, just mean and loud. Well, Brett turned the corner, and there's Myron leaning into the window of the concession stand kind of giggling, eating what appeared to be a hot dinner roll. Why is there a hot dinner roll at the concession stand? I did not know. I could only guess. Because usually, I mean, we just got standard staple stuff, you know, at the concession stand. Hey, and speaking of this, I got a surprise for y'all guys this week while it's on my mind. Uh, I've been mentioning the Wag Bar. They sponsored the first four episodes here. MyWagBar.com today. You can do this and, and you get 10% off your order. What do I got to do, Tab? Well, you go to MyWagBar. M Y W A G B A R dot com, and then when you check out on it on the discount, you you put in my name. It's Tavin T A V I N. So if you know how to spell my name, you getting ten percent off your order at my Wag Bar. It's premium Wagyu beef. It's like beef jerky, but it's thick. It's soft. Boy, it's hearty. Good protein. Low carbs. Ninety calories. Anyways, that's for y'all guys. Real quick, mywagbar dot com. Tavin's a discount discount code. Got me thinking about food, talking about that concession stand here, but where was I? Oh, okay. How did that hot dinner roll get to the concession stand? Because I know they don't sell them there, right? Well, my best guess would be like anybody's. I mean, you see, you, you got to put it together like you Sherlock Holmes or whatever. Let's say you're working at a concession stand and you on your way to the fields to work that concession stand. You hungry. You pick up a meal on the way. It's one of them styrofoam close me down mop boxes. Maybe it was a sit down meal and you had to take the rest to go kind of thing. You know, in them, them little close me down box. And in that box, along with whatever meal you ordered or what was left over from your meal, there's like a dinner roll. That's my best guess at how a hot butter dinner roll could end up at the concession stand in the hands of Myron Curtis this past week at them softball fields. Well, Brett got his attention. I mean, he's working for that good card table now. It wasn't until later I started, you know, to really regret the offer. Because, you know, like I said, you're in the middle of the heat of the battle at the softball field. There's a lot of man might say to make sure his entire team's on the field and ready to play. And I offered up like a 
kind of a treasure, I guess, the best, thing, best way I could put it. You know, something that's highly valuable in the trailer park, which is this good card table. Really, really important to my brother Brett, at least, I'll tell you that. It turns out Myron was really enjoying that dinner roll, which I assumed, like I said, came from a to-go meal at some nearby eatery. But you know what, y'all? I was wrong. Brett decides to hold Myron by the collar, even though he's already heading back our way. But I, I guess he just wants to show me that he's the one who caught him, you know, like a bounty hunter or whatever. And he wanted everybody else to know, not only did this fella get caught kind of thing, he was caught by me. You know, he's got him by the scruff of his neck on his Burger Shed uniform shirt, you know. Like that, that shirt didn't already have enough beating already by falling on the between first and second base and everything that happened to it last week. But that's how that works, best I can tell. He's got Myron coming back over. And Myron's kind of wide-eyed like a toddler who's even unaware he's in trouble, which for an adult acting that way can be borderline infuriating for everybody involved. Myron walks over toward me and showed me his elbow. Because, you know, when he, he, when he ate it in between first and second base, I guess he got a little scruff on his elbow. I don't even know if blood came to the surface, but he got a little scratch kind of thing. And I said, what is that, Myron? He said, it's my Band-Aid for my injury. I kid you not, Myron got that little scuff, you know, hitting that, hitting that infield, you know, when he's blowing that kiss at Mary Beth Tucker, and she put him on a Band-Aid over at the concession stand. Come on, Mort. You seen my chest? That road rash is from two weeks of chest, neck, and head first slides the first two weeks of the season. So don't even get me started on injuries. At least it wasn't no Pokemon or a little kid Band-Aid. It's just a regular Band-Aid, but still. And, and Myron just looked at me. He goes, they had dinner rolls over there that was softer than a baby angel's leg, Tavin, and plenty of butter, too. I said, how's that? He said, well, Mary Beth made her mama's recipe, brought a batch to the concession stand, and she's selling them. Now, I ain't never had no baby angel's leg, y'all guys. I can't imagine nobody has, but by the way Myron described it and put it together in my head in such a way that made me think, that's a pretty soft roll. Oh, they slide right down, he said, Tabin. Well, we got a game to play, Myron. I can't have you blowing kisses, getting Band-Aids, and eating baby angel leg dinner rolls right now. With butter, Myron says. Whatever, Myron. We can't be doing that. This is softball season. We already 0-3. You got to get your head out of the clouds. You got to. Now, if y'all guys know about numbers for sports, uh, the 0 and 3, the 0 is for wins, or the first number's for wins. For us, it's the O, which means no, none, zero. You ain't got to win. You ain't won a game yet. Oh, three is for losers. How many losses you got? We got three of them. Out of three games so far, we got O oh wins, three losses. And so you can see the whole team, we're getting kind of just agitated because uh, this don't need to keep happening, Myron. So we get up to bat. And Rusty Tidwell, he plays like he does anything else, just locked in. I mean, that guy can have a good time just hanging out the river on rope swing, backflips, all that. But even then, he's locked in. Can't nobody have focused fun like Rusty Tidwell can. He just got a mind for that, I guess. And he's an athlete. And when it comes to adult softball, them can be few and far between. You know, just like Mort Dwydell and, Mi and Milk, they just ain't, they ain't together. You know, athletes in adult softball, they don't always go together. Mort Dwydell and Milk... He ain't supposed to have it at all. He can't have no dairy. It's rare that he don't try to sneak something like that in, but he's got that thing where it'll tear his guts up, and if he has ice cream, milkshake, cheese, even butter, it's that, uh, uh, what they call that thing? Hold on. Maltose apology. Like, it's like, I think Cajun for no milk, I think. That might not be the name. Hold on. It's like Milk Trait Refugee, uh, Milk Trap Rosary, where you can't get no dairy. Maltate, Bahagini, I don't know. But he told me his wife will take the kids and head to a hotel or her mom's for the weekend because he said, I'll tear up the whole house tavern all the way down through the, through the uh, hallway into the garage. And he said it even soured the carport, even though it's open air. Milk trap, Bahagini, I think. It's, anyways, he can't have no dairy. That's more. So anyways, Rusty, he step up to bat and he ain't got no strategy except to knock the cover off the ball. That's all Rusty thinking. And that's what he do. He launched that thing over the left field wall. Cindy Mydell's out there walking her dog. It's a retired firehouse dog. She tried to pass it off once as a CNI dog at Walmart's rollback sale where I was working volunteer police, but it ain't no CNI dog. It only got one eye. The whole reason it was retired was A, it was owed. Secondly, because it got in a fight with a squirrel, lost an eye. So she tried to say a one eyed retired firehouse dog was a CNI dog. Boy, she got busted. Let me just say that. Not on my volunteer police watch, Cindy. No, ma'am. 
Well, Rusty's Homer roll out to that dog, and I don't guess it ain't got no periphery, especially out of that eye that don't work, and that ball rolled up to its foot, and that thing jumped. It got scared. It yanked the leash loose from Cindy Mydell, and then it turned and started attacking that softball. Now, we ain't like the major leagues where you catch a foul ball and you get yourself a souvenir, you know. I don't know how your town works, but you bring a home run ball or a foul ball back to the concession stand, you can trade that thing for a free snow cone. So Cindy's one-eyed dog is putting a hurting on that softball, biting it, slobbering all over it. It's a mess. I mean, it finally started getting the cover off. It was like working them threads, getting them threads loose, and just kind of peeling them back, just jerking this little head back when it got teeth under, and over and over. And I was thinking, I hope she don't think she's getting a free snow cone for that thing. If anything, just a cup of ice, because we ain't going to be able to use that ball now. Well, sticky finger Cindy just pick that nasty ball up, put it in her handbag, and keep it. So that's how that went. And I guess nobody cared enough to, like, call her on. It's like, fine, Cindy, you want that? Take it. Just scoot on. Rusty's homer ball met quite an end, though, and that's the truth about that. But that puts us within one run. So we was down two right before Rusty's at-bat, and he hit that homer, and that makes it uh, that makes it us down by one run. And then I got on first with a squibber down the third baseline. I love to slide, but went in feet first this time. Good thing, because that sweep tag, the first baseman tried to sweep tag me, or would have hit me in the face, uh, but I, it was my feet, and I don't know why in the world uh, he's sweep tagging at first base. All you got to do is stand on the base and catch the ball, but that's how he did it. Uh, that was his thing. Maybe he's trying to send a message from me, you know, like, hey, you better not you better not be trying to slide into first base, but, hey, he ain't my coach, you know, and I'm on here to win for Bud's Burger Shed kind of thing. So, look, look, at, look who's standing on first base now. Peekaboo, it's Tavin. And then Rance Farnhart, he popped out to the catcher. And the inning just kind of petered out from there. We had a little momentum. The rest of the game, we didn't get much else going. I mean, we, we so I guess let's look at it this way. We had some good news, and we had some bad news, you could say, down at the fields this week. Myron was locked in the rest of the game. That's the good news. Bad news is we lost again. This time it's 3-2. to two. And to a casual passerby who may have caught an inning or two of the game, that might look out there and see, hey, that team over there, that Bud, Bud Burger shit, they're semi-competitive. Like, that's, that's where we headed. I mean, yeah, we lost, but you look at the last three weeks before, uh, you see progress getting better. And in my book, that's a win at this point. 3-2 is pretty noble score. Honestly, once Myron mentioned them dinner rolls, everybody's head was kind of out of it. The team made a beeline over there after the game to get one, and then sold out fast. Mary Beth Tucker's mama's recipe dinner rolls, softer than a baby angel's leg. I didn't even get one. And I have no idea if they're going to be at the concession stand next week. In my mind, I'm thinking just stick to snow cones, hot dogs, Skittles. Mary Beth, come on. I mean, she's bringing them hot dinner rolls on a whim. Folks ain't going to know what to expect every week. Not to mention they can't even keep all the snow cone flavors in stock. But Bird's Burger Shed, like our team, like our adult softball team, I feel like we are getting close, like I really do. It's only a matter of time and things going to turn. That's just how life works. You crank it something long enough, you're bound to get some results. Sometimes somebody cranks it something for 10 minutes or two innings, and they hope for 10 years or one season's worth of results. Nope. You got to crank that thing for years. You might get that pump primed, and you're seeing results for decades to come. But it take that work. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. We're just trying to win next week is all I'm saying. We're due, too, not just because we... Lost so many times, but because we putting in that work. I didn't really have time to sulk over losing a softball game or losing out on hot hot dinner rolls that Mary Beth Tucker brought that were softer than a baby angel's leg. I didn't have no time because I had to let my brother Brett use a good card table for some trailer park wrestling so he could top rope elbow drop and do all that. It don't take long for a crowd together, I tell you that right now, and I about got caught up in it. Well... Actually, let me let me clarify that. I did get caught up in it because anytime I got an opportunity to go head to head with my brother, uh, buddy, it's on. He's my older brother. He tried to top rope me, but I got him with the ground game. He didn't expect it. Tied him up with the figure four leg lock. He tried to reverse it. No luck. But before I even got into it with him, I took that shirt off because I still ain't used to having an uniform. And even though it's for wearing, I took it off to whoop my brother. And I'm just going to save it for games, nights, at least for the time being, just for the the softball game nights. Card table lasted a little longer than our remote control car does. You know, like a remote control car, they last about 11 seconds. And once they once they get fired up and about 11 seconds in, they, they get run into something, get broke, lose a wheel, whatever. That card table lasted up for 40 seconds before a leg snap, and Brett picked it up to whack J.T. Whitlow, who blocked it with the top of the card table. 
and then the rules the rules got a little loose after that as the night went on it got into more like street fighting eventually brett was picked up by the police which is not uncommon when he's in town and then things got quiet say what you want about my brother though he got myron back to the fields and that's what i asked him to do so i guess in the end is pretty good trade this week i got my eye on our first w of the season coming up because we ain't no quitters so i hope y'all y'all can tune in next week and i'm gonna let y'all know how it went and hey if you down there early enough, I don't know if Mary Beth's going to bring them hot butter dinner rolls or softer than a baby angel's leg, but if she do, I'd get down there early. She was sitting on, she had the little pads of butter, them little rectangle pads. She's sitting on them. They are under, stuck under her thigh. I mean, she got her she got her long britches on, you know, for the wetter, but she's sitting, she got a stool that she sit on, and then she had them little rectangle pads of butter, and she's sitting on them to, to, under her thighs to, to soften them up, you know, so they'd be, uh, you know, easy to spread on the dinner rolls. Now, I don't know if that was public knowledge, but I found out about it, got a little grossed out, but I, I see the logic in it, too. Because when you hit the fields, and then it's like a little baby brick, uh, you don't, it's hard to spread on a dinner roll. And I like a lot of butter. You know, I like it on the top. I, I like it in the middle, you know, or the roll, break it open. But I put it on top, almost like a cupcake, like icing. But like I said, I didn't get none of them baby angel rolls tonight. So maybe next week, but who knows with Mary Beth. Her mind's in the clouds too, just like her, her boyfriend Myron. So there's a good chance that uh, she she uh, she ain't bringing nothing next week. And hopefully she'll get there on time, you know, and just sell the normal stuff, the Skittles and the hot dogs and the snow cones. But I wanted to let y'all know there's a few ways to get in touch with me. If you you looking to hang out during the week on a, on the interwebs, I'm at TikTok, Tavin Dillard. Uh, you know, they, uh, there's a, a video every day that gets posted there. The YouTubes is Sweet Tea Films. I've been on there since 2006. Uh, Instagrams and, and Facebook is Tavin Dillard. That's my name. You can find me on them places. And, hey, you just want to send me a text message, 501-322-6249. That's right. 501-322-6249. You can holler at me that way, too. I sure appreciate you joining me here on the Tab and Diller podcast. And, uh, you, yeah, there's all kinds. Of, you, you check that, tabanddiller.com. You, you can see the Burger Shed shirts, all kinds of other shirts over there. We got long sleeves coming out this fall. Not at a Burger Shed shirt. We got a Burger Shed hoodie coming out. We got a squirrel that's in a headlock by a fully mature peacock hoodie coming out. And then some long sleeve shirts, like the Bank Bank shirt's gonna be long sleeve. The bacon only recipe, if you've seen that uh, short sleeve shirt, we're gonna have a long sleeve. And it's never the bait's fault, which is a good fishing. That's a good fishing motto to live by. It's gonna we we got a long sleeve of that coming out. So you can check all those things out. To show up on the on the website, uh, tavendillard.com, sweetteafilms.com. That's the same place. So you you can do that. And I'm gonna get out of here. I done got hungry. I don't know where I can find any kind of roll that's close to a baby angel's leg, but if it's got butter on it, I think I'll be doing, I'll be doing all right. I appreciate y'all. Y'all can check, uh, y'all can rate this podcast on wherever you're listening on, or you can go check out all them other things, um, you know, that I've been talking about, from from the uh, Wag Bar Tavern. That's the code at mywagbar.com. You can check out the new merchandise coming out. And you can send me a text message, 501-322-6249. But whatever you do, have a good rest of your day and a good rest of your week. Can't wait to holler at you soon. We'll see you later.